Yes, my name is Bench, and welcome back to StarMate. We're going to take a look at the Dev 0.19193 build, or the Rail update, um, which now includes some of the new logic blocks that we've been working on. If you've been wondering where I've been, it's been this whole development process for this. This is my little baby, and I'm really excited for it. So we've got a bunch of new logic blocks. So some um, are really simple, and some are a little bit more um, functional, which is really cool. Now, you might be looking, we've seen these ones in front of you before. Yes, these aren't the actual texture packs, but they do have the functionality in there, or at least part of it. So first is the button. Now this button works basically the same as this circuit over here. You'll recognize it. We push the button, and it goes off after a half second. Now that's all been compacted into one button, which is great. And this makes it a whole lot easier. It sends out an on state, and then after a half second, goes to an off state, which is great. The second one is called the flip-flop. Now, you'd have to build a slightly more complicated circuit to be able to get the same functionality that you get from a flip-flop. You can see it's active now, and if I try to change it, I can't actually. The flip-flop is designed to take a high signal and toggle whenever it gets one. Essentially, with our circuits, or with our logic blocks, we have a inactive. You can see it says currently inactive. And if we go over this one, it says currently active. So the inactive is low or off. The active is high or on. Uh, you can see that in the masterclass video you can see here. If you want to check out a little bit more about how those are applied. But the button is really cool because... Um, it can integrate with the flip-flop very easily, as can anything else. Um, so we can demonstrate here, if we go and drain it up and push the button, you'll see now our flip-flops, well, flip-flopped. <laughs> and basically what is happening is that when we're getting the high signal, it's just going from an off to an on state or from an on to an off state, which is really useful. Now we can take anything, if I throw an activation module down and plug it in there, you can see that when it goes on, it changes off. If I go off, it doesn't do anything. If I go on again, it changes on. If it goes off, it goes stays on. If I go like that, and I can toggle, I can toggle. So it just takes all those different high, and it is specifically looking for a low to high signal. So that is our flip-flop. Now, our last one over here is one that I'm very excited about. It is the wireless logic module. Now, it's going to have a very nice texture pack to go with it, or texture, block texture to go with it. And what we'll do is to demonstrate this, I'll have to have these two entities because it's completely designed to work between two entities. So we'll have one there. We'll grab one and place one just uh, down there. Now, we can take it here and drain it to our light, so we can see, now the pipes aren't set up just yet, but it should work fine. Now, what we'll do is we'll hit C on the module that we want to join to a module. We'll fly over here and we'll hit V. You'll see a little pop-up saying, wireless logic blocks connected. That's what we want. Now, if you see, look down and watch, you'll see it toggles. Like so. So the number four is actually the inactive one, and the number three is the active one. That's currently in the 0 0.19193 build. But you can see it does take a little bit of time. It's still obviously still in dev, but you can see we're sending a logic signal between two different entities, which is really cool. We haven't been able to do this at all before. Far out, check that out. Now, you'll be wondering, all right, this will be one of the first things that comes up. Can I actually hook other logic up to it? Well, no. It, you'll see it toggles, but it won't toggle the other one. It hasn't been added in for this particular dev, but it will be coming very soon, which is really exciting. So those are the new logic blocks that are coming out. There's so many cool combinations that you can do. Let's show you um, one of the really uh, useful setups that you can use these ones with with your rails. Okay, so here's a simple landing gear design. Now, I've got a couple of blocks going around um, just to go around our actual 
landing gear, which is here in the middle, is currently extended down. I'm actually been using it as a little elevator to get me up into my, well, it would be a ship, but whatever. Um, so you can see, here's our rail at the moment, and our rail uh, is docked, to, our rail docker is docked to it. Now, one of the new updates is that we've got these uh, activation modules, and the activation module will toggle each time the rail dock goes over that particular thing, which is really useful because we can use it with a number of the new blocks. So, we'll place an activation module on either end of where we want to go up and down, and we put it into our button. We then take our button and put it back into the activation module, and now what you'll see is hitting the activation module, it acts basically the same as a button. Now we need to do this because the rail won't output when the rail dock is over the top of it to anything except an activation module. So this is just a simple way of just getting a little pulse out every time it goes over a certain thing. Now you see we've got a button and a button on either end, and they're both going into our flip-flop which is great because our flip-flop's going to toll whenever we go up and whenever we go down. So it's an easy way of tracking whether we want our circuit to be going upwards or we want them to be going downwards on the rails. So we take the flip-flop, put it into a knot, and we'll also take the flip-flop, put it into an and. We then take the other knot and put it into an and. Now this is because we want to put it into an and because we don't want it constantly toggling up and down, up and down, for all eternity, unless that's what you really want. Um, but in this design, it won't trigger until we push our button. And what'll happen is it'll trigger the change of our rail to go from the one direction. You can see we've got one which is set to down and we've got one which is set to up. Now the knot is on, so you can know that the next time we push the button, it'll change all these rails to go up and we'll lift our thing. So we can push that now and you can see, there we go. And we'll fly around the back and you can see now the knot's off, the flip-flop's toggled. And so it's going to activate this end gate when we push the button next, which will then change it all to down. Which we'll push there. You can see it goes down again, which is great. It's a nice robust system. And I could take any number of buttons and hook them up into this flip-flop uh, into the AND gates, or into, sorry, this activation module, I'll get it right, <laughs> into the activation module, which goes into the AND gates, and I could trigger this from anywhere in my ship, I could trigger it from an engineering or from a landing area, um, and you'll see pushing the button multiple times isn't going to make it mess up, because we've already changed it to the state, it's not flip-flopping anything, you can see that's how it works, now if we left it on, you'll see it'll just go up, and it'll go down. And it'll toggle like that. And the other thing I've done is I've hooked up the uh, the little wireless logic over here, going into the button, which means that even when I toggle it and leave it on, the button's only going to go on for a half second, and so I can trigger the system as a whole. So here's a little example of how to use some of our new logic blocks, which is really exciting. So until next time, my name is Bench and I'll see you then.